Hey, trail travelers. We are at Barber Forks OHV, and this is the parking lot here. It's a good spot to air down. We're only uh, right outside the gate to start heading up into the trail. Now, the trail is located right outside of Idaho Springs, so it's pretty close to downtown area and everything, only about an hour or so drive to get out here. And then you just come up the road. Uh, well, I can't remember the name of the street here, but uh, it's only takes you a few minutes to get up to this parking lot area. I'll kind of spin around here. You can see this parking lot space. They said good spot to air down and air back up. So we're going to get Optimus all prepared and get on the road. Or on the trail, I should say. As you leave the staging area, just turn left and you're right there at the beginning of the trail. I'm just resetting my trip meter here. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and head up. Now this certainly uh, is closed. Uh, let's see, it says it's open June 15th to December 15th. So keep that in mind if you're planning on coming up here. Well, after you pass the first few obstacles, which are not that big of a deal, you definitely want to be in four-wheel drive. You'll climb right over them. No need for lockers at this point, not during the this time of year for sure. Uh, winter is a whole different animal through here. We're a mile in and we're kind of in this beautiful wooded area with a mix of aspen and pine trees. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it is the first week of October, so fall is hitting us. We had kind of an early fall this year, but uh, it is really, really beautiful through here right now. But we did see some stock Wrangler Sports come out of here. So on a nice dry day like this, should be pretty much open to any four wheel drive. You want a little uh, amount of extra ground clearance, that'll, that'll help. There are some, some nice rocks through here and like I said a few little obstacles that you're going to have to go over. So a little extra ground clearance is not going to hurt. But then once you're up here in this wooded area, it's really nice. So when you get to the fork in the road, make sure you stay to the right. Again, this is where uh, something like Gaia GPS can really come in handy to make sure that you're taking the right trails. Now this is a little narrow. We are getting, uh, you know, attacked by some plants on either side, right there, some pine trees and some other bushes. Okay, 194.2, make sure we're on the right trail, and up we go. So Gaia Maps, or Gaia GPS, or Onyx are both excellent. I like both of those. Really give you a, a better sense of where you're at and making sure that you're staying on the trails. But the... <laughs> 1.4 mile mark, you kind of come upon uh, the hardest obstacle so far. And it can get pretty darn tippy if you're not watching yourself. So just take it easy on that one. I think we're rolling up to about a 25 degree uh, roll at one spot right there because I took it a little too wide. Had to reposition to redo it but not too shabby. The rest of it wasn't too bad. Now I would absolutely recommend that before you get on this trail, you disconnect your sway bars. It'll make doing that a whole lot easier and less tippy for you. All right, well, hopefully we'll have some more cool obstacles up ahead.
you absolutely definitely want a GPS navigation tool coming up through here. There's a lot of little side roads and some of them are marked and you can see on like Gaia maps what trail it is and others that have no markings at all. They don't appear to exist and yet they are trails leading off of the main trail here. So if you're not being careful, you can easily end up going the wrong direction. So I highly recommend that you have a map with a navigator or a good GPS navigation tool like Gaia GPS or uh, Onyx. But so far we're just cruising up here. I would call this on the um, mid moderate uh, difficulty right now. Definitely not for stock um, sedans, things like that, which like an easy road would be. Well, we're at 3.2 miles and we've been doing um, a good amount of climbing here. Uh, how high have we, we gone? We gained 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet? We're at 10,240. Ten thousand two hundred fifty five feet at the three point two mile mark. We're still just cruising along. It will uh you know, there's a few spots that are kind of rocky. There's a few little obstacles to go over. Anyone who says that this is an easy trail is just kind of blowing smoke because an easy trail I would have taken my BMW X3 on. This is not one of those trails. This is going to take some ground clearance and some four wheel drive to get on. Uh, met up with a couple other guys up in front of us here. They're kind of leading the way. If you like the smell of pine trees, this is definitely a trail for you. From about the 3.2 mile mark or so, we've been heading downhill now. And nice, rocky, very slippery rocks. There's a few times the back end has slipped a few inches here or there. If you're not used to that, that can be kind of a freaky experience. That's the map team from Trails Off-Road. Probably just checking conditions and things. But yeah, coming down, I just dropped it in manual one and just kind of coasted down through all of it. It kept us at a really nice, steady, slow speed to where we weren't picking up too much momentum going over some rocks. But there's certainly a few spots where it felt like the back end shifted on a rock by a few inches and the first time that happens that can be a little uh, disconcerting but you get used to it but this trail is beautiful today the weather's great there's no smoke today from the fires that are burning it's really a wonderful day through here the aspens have pretty much dropped so we're not seeing a lot of color in this area but the pine tree smells fantastic. And as you're first coming up Barber Forks uh, Trail, one of the first main offshoots is 194.2B, which actually is what we're on now. We just be we're going in the other direction than had we come from the main trail. And that'll take you uh, basically in a clockwise direction around the whole loop. Now, what we did is we went counterclockwise, which is fine. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but right here, we just passed this little shed, kind of cool little thing, good place to stop for a picnic, have your lunch. Now, as we continue on, in this direction, 
we come into this big meadow area and just take a look at some of these trees. I mean, they have just been mangled and destroyed by the wind up here. And we're very fortunate. It is just slightly breezy today. I, I wouldn't even call it windy at all, just slightly breezy, which is beautiful for a nice fall day. Now, as we, well, that was a big bump. As we clear these aspens here, you'll see another cool feature of this area that one of the ones that makes it super popular is these rock formations off to our right. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down here so you can see these. So this is a nice big area. You can fit a bunch of vehicles here for camping, for lunch, you know, taking a break here. And a lot of people get some beautiful shots up on these rocks here. But right now we're looking out over the distance and we see these beautiful patches of yellow aspens all over the place. Absolutely a gorgeous day to be up here at Barber Forks. Oh, that's about the end of that trail. And we're gonna head back down and get back to the main trail. And that'll pretty much start wrapping it up here on Barber Forks. And we'll do a little uh, recap once we get back to the parking lot. Well, that wraps up Barber Forks. We just finished airing Optimus back up with our Smitty built 5.4 cubic foot air compressor because my CO2 tank ran out. <laughs> I only made it a few pounds on the tank before it gave out. So today we were back to using the compressor until I can get the uh, tank refilled this week. But Barber Forks is a lot of fun. It's a good challenging trail for a beginner, a new person out there. I do not recommend coming out here by yourself if you're brand new because there are some tricky spots that you should get spotted on. But anyone who's got a, a handful of experience on them, it's, you'll, you'll find this is a pretty uh, decent trail. I rate it on a, uh, I would say on a mid-moderate, a low to mid-moderate. You cannot take up just any sedan or, or car up there, therefore it's not an easy which by definition that is like, oh my God, road or something, but it's not super hard either. You don't need tons of ground clearance. You don't need lockers. You can make it all the way through this on just four wheel drive in a Jeep and a Tacoma or an FJ or whatever. And it's a fun trail. And there's a variety of sites from wide open meadows to really dense aspens to thick pine trees. It's just a beautiful trail to be on. And today was a gorgeous day for it. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Kerry with Trail Traveler. Like, share, and subscribe. Always appreciate it. And it definitely helps out the channel. And we'll catch you on the trails next time. Bye-bye.